Welcome to Game Pass News, recorded August 19th, 2021. We talk about what is hot in the world of Xbox, what's coming, what's going on Game Pass each and every week. Thanks for listening. My name is Nick, and this is my co-host, Sean Abbott. Sir, how are you doing today? Hey, yo. Uh, I'm good. Today, today's a good day. Today's been a busy day. Today's <laughs> been a day of lots of laundry and finally starting to pack we go away next week so we finally started to uh start organizing ourselves i think we've got the kids packed i'm almost packed Lindsay's almost packed our eldest is nowhere near packed because she's never here or apparent <laughs> to actually do any form of trying on things to make sure they fit summer clothes wise or anything like that so yeah but yeah i'm good we've we've had a lot going on so i've been very very distant um We've, we've, yeah, we've had a lot going on. But, um, so Lindsay, Lindsay's granddad, um, is now home, but that was a complete saga in itself. So we were doing his, uh, we were doing his care morning and evening, um, until something was con- concrete was in place. So we I'm were glad you guys like... got that figured out because that sounded, oh, yeah, that sounded so rough. So glad you guys got yeah, something I mean, figured out. Li- yeah, literally, like yesterday was the first day that we hadn't had to go across to do the care we went across to see him anyway and, and um and while the, the carers that have been looking after him and helping him get up and about um were there we kind of like you know we just sat and chatted with him and stuff like that which was nice it was nice mm-hmm. to kind of be family rather than right yeah totally different to go see somebody and just hang instead of instead yeah. of having to like be their medical care provider so <laughs> So we, uh, we've had some good laughs. We've, we've, um, well, like one morning while we were getting him kind of like up and sorted and dressed and out of bed, we, um, he's a very big status quo and queen fan. So we, we had some music on and we were having a bit of a, he was singing along and bopping along and stuff like that. So yeah, we've had some good moments with it as well. So she's been awesome. nice. It's been, yeah. So how about you, man? How is it? Cause you've had some crazy weather since the last time we got together you have lost power yeah man it's the so we had the worst storm that i have ever seen around here i mean it was it was really tough they uh we lost power for about a day and a half there are still some people who don't have power in our area and the power went out for most people on wednesday so we had uh uh, i don't even know what this is it's called straight line winds is that something you know? Do you do you guys ever get that, or you ever talk about that? Um, I'm assuming it's a meteorology term saying that it is like super high speed. It's not going to break much. Oh, it breaks much. It breaks much. It breaks <laughs> well, much. <yeah. laughs> let me let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, you get this basically full force going from side to side. You've you've got kind of like no like hot and cold fronts that are going to back it off and yeah. change it in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, so that's what we had. It wasn't a tornado. We had straight line winds. Maybe that means they just went straight and they didn't swirl around. I have no idea. Anyways, <laughs> all I can tell you is so Wednesday we had a, we had straight line winds and there was a lot of stuff that that got broke. And our pot we lost power. There's a tree that went down in our neighbor's backyard which landed on a power pole which ended our power for a while. Um and, but the crazy thing is, we didn't even have any alarms go off or anything. Like, I, I'm sitting there at work. We have these, like, floor-to-ceiling, almost floor-to-ceiling windows. And I have an office that sits in front of one of them. And I'm just sitting there watching all this all this go on. And I'm like, wow, looks pretty bad out there. Looks rough. And then, like, all of a sudden, this tree just goes... Oh, and I'm like, I'm going to get away from the window. That's what I'm going to do. That's my plan. <laughs> find me a ba- find, find a bathtub and hide in it. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, yeah, so I drove home that day. There was a horse, a horse had broken free. So there was a horse running down the road um, without anybody. Out. It was, it was fantastic. So you, um, you sent me that, you sent me that picture. And all I could think about was like, um, I don't know if you ever watched The Walking, you probably didn't watch The Walking Dead because you don't do anything with it. But there's a scene where uh, Rick Grimes, the main character, and it's kind of like walk, he's riding into Atlanta on a horse. And it's like, there's just him and some cars. And it kind of reminded me of that. And I was thinking, wow, it was really like post apocalyptic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? It, it had that feel. I mean, and then, but Thursday, we had it again in the morning, and that one was way worse. Way, way worse. I mean, at, when I drove to work, which took me about an hour because I had to find a way that didn't have a tree on the road to actually <laughs> get to work, 
Um, the best way I could describe it is if you've ever played Katamari Damacy, you know, the game where you just roll everything up. Yeah, that, yep. that's what it looked like. I mean, it looked like somebody <laughs> had just like rolled up all the trees and all the power lines and the wires and everything on the way and just kind of rolled it up into a big ball. And I mean, it's just yeah. crazy. So I will say the one God sighting, the one blessing for us is we there was no loss of life in the in the county. And so I don't wow, know that's, how that's possible. Yeah, that's that's good news, because, yeah, usually when you get big, big, well, big issues like that, yeah, and that kind of somebody always ends up getting injured. So, yeah, I mean, with all the trees that came down, I do not know how there was not a human in the way of one of them, but but um, <laughs> I'm glad there was not. So, uh, yeah, that's that's been my fun for the week. Um, so, but why don't we uh, why don't we chat about a little bit of top stories in the Xbox world? Um, we have a new Xbox headset came out, except this one's wired, wired at half the price at fifty five bucks. And uh, have you have you seen it at all? I I haven't. Have and you seen the I, wireless I, one? Back I like the way? I like the look of the wireless one, and yeah. a lot of people say it works very very well. So I don't know. Uh, I don't yeah. see any difference. It looks exactly like that one, minus there's a wire. So uh, which is probably true. Um, so I don't know. It's out there. I just thought we'd tell people about it if you're interested in Xbox headset, uh, but you don't want to put down a salty ninety nine dollars. Maybe fifty five is better for you, and that's all USD price. Yeah, I mean, I'm wondering if it plug if it plugs into the controller, which makes yeah. it still wireless, but you're wired to the controller. That's not too bad. Cause, I mean, that's how I spent absolutely ages with my first headset was it was wired to the controller. So, sure. I mean, I bought this wireless headset, and I never use it wireless. So there's there's <laughs> there's always that. Um, I, I, uh, I, you I, see, I I used to have the Turtle Beach. Uh, 42s prior to this and it had to be wired to the controller for, for party chat and game chat and stuff like that. Mm, okay. But then Lindsay bought me the Astro A50s as like a as a Christmas present and my word the, that ability to just put the controller down and like walk away and I can these mm. I can walk around the entire house so like even while we were streaming now because it's the same headset I use. I could walk upstairs and still be talking to you. I wouldn't be on the camera, but you know, but sure. the range on these things is amazing. So yeah. Gotcha. And and so yeah, I, I do want to mention I do want to mention somebody has has DM'd us about the fact that my video flickers. Hey, if anybody knows why that's happening, great. It only happens when I use Zoom to OBS. So before I'm sorry, I can't figure it out. Um when I move my video from Zoom to OBS, it flickers. So I know it's there. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't figure it out. I don't know what to do. Um, yeah, we're, we're still we're still fresh to this, and the technical ins and outs we sometimes get very wrong. So right, sometimes yeah. we upload podcasts with tiki talkies in the background, and sometimes you know <laughs> Nick just seems to flicker around. He's just that's magic right. like that. So right. you know, leave us alone. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, you know, uh, hey, what's up, Bruce? Good to see you, man. Thanks for making it. We appreciate it. Um, so next on next on our top stories, we have we have a really interesting story. This one I was shocked by this. So Outriders came out. Oh, I don't know what six months ago, something like that. It came out. Yeah, just, maybe, just, maybe longer than that. It came out just before the next gen consoles released because then, like, there was this massive hoorah that you know is it going to be like a is it going to be a shit show like Cyberpunk was and not work properly and because mm-hmm. it was made almost made for the next gen consoles and then the next gen consoles released and outriders like you know it was the top most downloaded game for game pass so yeah yeah it was it was huge uh i know that john got in on it uh he was a big fan of it um it kind of was going right before we got started i think with game pass news because i remember thinking oh yeah we're we're about to you know get this rolling um, it was it was one of the games that we were aiming to play together when mm-hmm. this first started, which I downloaded it, and we never actually got around to playing it. So. We we never never did. That's true. But here is the interesting part: the devs, which is people can't fly. Uh, so so the people the people from people can't fly have said that they have yet to see royalties from this game. What? How do you not? <laughs> how do you sell twenty? Okay, so what did they say? Did they say? I I believe. Now I got to go to the article. I think they said they in the, in the article they said they estimated it was somewhere between two and a half and three million units sold. 
How have you not seen any money? It's been like eight months, nine months. I don't yeah. understand. Maybe longer. Maybe ten months. I don't know. I don't know how clocks work. So, but anyways, <laughs> I don't like. I am shocked by this. Is it a Game Pass thing or is it? So the publisher. We're talking about the developer now, not not the publisher, which is Square Enix, by the way. So the publisher is Square Enix. Is it a publisher thing or is it a Game Pass thing? I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's. They've got to have seen the. Is it that they've not seen any money, money, any royalties from the game at all? Have they not seen any royalties from the subscription service like Game Pass? Also, how do they not? They say we do not have any sales figures for Outriders. We estimate it at between two and three million units. I mean, I think I'd be asking. Uh, we assume that this was a result that would ensure profitability for this project in the first quarter of sales. The lack of payment by the publisher probably means that, according to Square Enix, this is not the case. Now, they inked a deal with Square Enix that said they would not get paid until Square Enix paid off the cost of the game. The, the developer arranged an agreement with Square Enix that would ensure it would receive royalties only after the costs of the game had been recouped. So does that two and two to three million hey. units uh, include yeah. Game Pass? Because if it does, maybe that's the problem. Possibly. Um, I mean, I don't know. Because again, it's how difficult is it to to, to say? Because like I downloaded Outriders, but I never played it. So how do they class that as a unit? Did they just do it because somebody's downloaded it? They class it that okay, that unit has made another sale. Do they do it like that? Because I mean, like that's how yeah. that's how like the music charts work, isn't it? If you've got like a subscription service like Spotify or iTunes, you pay monthly to that subscription service. You then download the song or play the song. That's how they then get royalties for that. So they must have the same. Uh, it must be a similar contract that they have with things like Game Pass. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, but it utterly blows me away, and it cannot be good. So if that's the issue, if it's a Game Pass issue, it it really does not bode well for this service in the long run. Because at some point, people are going to, I mean, developers, no matter how much it, I know how much publicity they get by putting their name on here, they're not going to put, they're not going to do it day and day. Why, why would you? Um, no. It would, it'll be an afterthought. It'll be like, uh, it'll be like, you know, after maybe six months, you get, you start getting what, what's coming to Game Pass. I. Or is it not a Game Pass problem and it's a publisher issue? Either one, they spent too much money. <laughs> there is a shit ton of money to recoup to in the game, in the cost of the game. Or two, Square Enix just inked a really bad deal with, with uh, Xbox. So yeah, they just didn't just, make what they should have. I'm very quickly going to develop. Uh, people can't fly. Develop. I'm just going to very quickly um, look at the developers. And see what other games. That's a good um, question. Because it, it is this that that they are a new like developer, and this game was like their first boom out of the gate, and people and, can fly. You know, I'm not a developer, obviously, but maybe yeah, if it is their first one, maybe uh, maybe there's other developers out there that are chuckling, saying, "Yeah, that's not how it works, guys." You're not, you know. <laughs> Like maybe they're like, oh, you don't you don't understand how this business works. You don't get money like that. Um, so I I don't know. I don't know if that's common or uncommon. But uh, yeah, it just really shocked me that they hadn't seen any cash yet from this thing. Not a check. So so, what else do they got? Um, it's not a case of what else have they got. It's kind of swapped hands a lot, which is interesting. And like, I'm just looking for it. People can people can fly as a Polish video game developer based in Warsaw, which is obviously Poland. Um, the show was founded in February 2002. It was for a previously while. confounded. Yeah, they've been a while. Previously confounded uh, Metropolis Software together with acquaintances. The show's first game was Painkiller 2004. The game's success led to a deal with THQ, which we know was a pretty good um, developer to be with. Um, which allowed the studio to expand. After the game was cancelled, people can find people can fly found itself in financial trouble. Epic Games acquired a majority share of People Can Fly in August two thousand and seven. 
was used in projects such as Bullet Storm and Gears of War Judgment. So they've they've kind of been in other in games, but yeah. not as people can fly. Yeah. Um, Epic bought the studio outright in 2012, which is probably why they got the Gears of War Judgment deal. Um, people can fly was rebranded Epic Games Poland in 2013. Um, the studio spun off under its former name and logo under 20, June 2015, so they kind of split off and went off again on their own. It, uh, the company employs 350 people in eight different locations, and its most recent game is Outriders. So they haven't really had, on their own, a massive game True. ever yeah. come out looking at this. And, and if, you, if you have 350 people in eight different locations... And you have not been given any cash. <laughs> like, yeah, like, you you in trouble, Sean. Ain't no way. There ain't no other way to say it. You in trouble. Like, uh, unless they've got somebody footing the bill because they're making something else for them. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and that's it. They've, they've had a lot of they've had a lot to do with Epic Games. So Epic Games, obviously, we know them from Fortnite and yeah. Bulletstorm, which I've played. Bulletstorm, it's not a bad game. Um, obviously, we all know Fortnite's making absolute bucket loads of cash because it's a battle royale with pay to play um but yeah they must have had they must have had a lot of financial help then from square enix to to develop and publish the game outriders and square enix are like okay we've put a we've put in a lot of cash for this game so we need to see the income first before it's then passed on to you guys so yeah yeah, that's uh, that's a crazy story to me. But uh, maybe you know, and I, I'll say this again: I'm not a developer. Maybe not as maybe it's not as crazy as it sounds. Um, uh, <laughs> not gonna comment on that. Um, uh, <laughs> next next story. <laughs> okay. Next story. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming you've just followed the same link I followed. <laughs> uh, I did it from our chat. It. Yeah. I didn't follow it. All right, fine. Everybody's going to wonder. Uh, somebody has posted who is getting their Xbox Game Pass American Girl accessories, which I am not, um, but good to anybody who is. Uh, <laughs> Bill Spencer, this is a fun one, says Switch doesn't, don't want, uh, don't you like how I cannot spell? The uh, Phil Spencer says Switch doesn't want Game Pass, but maybe in the future. Um, so I've been a big proponent for Switch being a... Uh, uh, being or Game Pass being on Switch, uh, I would I think it would go well for both companies, but uh, it sounds like Nintendo isn't so much from what I read. Nintendo isn't so much into it. Are you surprised by that? No, no. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Not really. Yeah. Although I think they I think they could really make some cash off of it. But I mean, uh, Xbox seemed to be this kind. Well, Microsoft with xbox kind of want to see uh, this like hey man don't make war make peace and they want kind of like the consoles to all come together where sony are like uh no screw you and nintendo's kind of like we we can would would we're, we're, we're currently owning it so you know back off mm. <laughs> so is is that a sign that microsoft are a bit like hey look how a game pass thing isn't doing as well as we wanted it to do we we don't seem to be selling it to a right lot of people you know do you want it too? Because you know that might bring people from Microsoft to it to Nintendo a little bit more, and Nintendo are kind of they can kind of sit back because we know how well the the Switch sold in the last like, three or four years. They can kind of just go, "Now you're okay, go away." <laughs> yeah, not. Um... Yeah, I agree with that. I also agree, or I also think that Xbox is in is in a spot where it's easy for them to take the moral high ground of like, well, everybody should play together. Like, you know, just put our, just put our subscription on all of y'all stuff because that's the way it should be. And then we'll all be friends that benefits Microsoft more than it benefits anybody else. Right. I mean, they're not trying to sell exclusive software. They're trying to sell a subscription. So yeah, for them being everywhere makes the most sense. And it's not that that's a bad business decision or they shouldn't do that, but it's just kind of funny to be like, well, why can't we all just be friends? Well, if you had Stellar Software and you were trying to make money off selling that Stellar Software, you probably wouldn't be like, 
well, why can't we all just be friends? You know, <laughs> you would probably be like, uh, no, I want, I want people to buy my software, not your. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't, I think it's easy for them. And I mean, it's a good strategy. They get to look good and, uh, and, and still try to push what they're, uh, they kind of look, not look good, but they get to look like they're taking the high ground and still get to push their subscription service at the I will say in this story, the one line that I think is in, or one of the lines that I think doesn't get, didn't get mentioned a lot from stories I read, um, that I think is interesting. Uh, he, so they ask uh, about putting, about putting at Game Pass on Switch. And he says, Phil Spencer, that is, says, our strategy is not to just get to be like someone else. I get a push sometimes of where's your version of this or that game. I've been in this industry for long enough. I've oh no that's I'm sorry I'm reading the wrong I'm reading the wrong <laughs> quote darn it that was a really that was the long that was the long one um oh let me see if I can find it all right never mind um but anyways he he basically says listen I want people to have the full Xbox experience not just this game or that game and so it sounds to me like he is no longer interested in selling like Ori or <laughs> That's that's interesting, Sean. Um, yeah, Ori, I'm just trying something. Or Cuphead, or something like that. He wants to sell the full Xbox experience. In 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 essence, saying, listen, if you want to play, then come and and take Game Pass. That's what we're offering. And if you don't, yeah. then that's fine too. But um, yeah, so but he does say at the end, he says, you know, hey, listen, maybe maybe Game Pass on Switch will happen at some point. But right now, it doesn't seem to be in the cards. What he says, actually, to be fair, what he says is we are not working with a closed platform system. Which is interesting because two weeks ago or a week ago, he tweeted about the about the Steam Deck and how he had been working with the guys over there at valve and has had it for about a week and it works really well that would be considered an open platform so uh yeah i wondered if they were colluding together collaborating. i mean Not really. yeah i mean if if that happens and nintendo kind of go mm, no we're okay we don't want it and put steam but go hey look we can run it come here come here mm -hmm. nintendo could miss out because hardware sales might go through the roof for that steam deck because i know then i'd be intrigued if i could play my like the xbox game pass games that i currently can't play because i can't get to the tv because there's children at home all the time or Killer. by the time <laughs> by the time we get them to bed it's kind of like like i can't envision trying to focus on something for that long before going to sleep because they are got like they're, they're still awake now. They're currently just playing and chilling out in the room. It's nine p.m. in the UK, so by the time they actually go to sleep, and I don't have to be a responsible parent, other than make sure that they're, they're still sleeping. I just I don't I don't know how else I'd play it. So being able to play my the, the games that I currently want to play on the Game Pass from Game Pass handheld on the Steam Deck, I'd then be interested in getting hold of one. So. Yeah, and I mean, it it makes a lot of sense for the Steam Deck. If they want it to be popular, they need something. I think more than just um their own their own system or their own platform of games. Um, so if they can hook in with Xbox, which is interested in Xbox on everything, and 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 they, I think that could be a good marriage for them. I would be interested in it if they somehow make it possible and i know this is hard because it runs on linux and so it's hard to get games or i don't know if it's hard or impossible i don't know what's the right what's the right verbiage there but um the only way that i that i've heard of to get games from game pass onto there would be to wipe the os and put on windows which you can do they even said that um i don't want to do that i don't want to buy a thing wipe it and then put something else on it like that seems like way too much work i just want it yeah and Work. And I definitely don't want to put Windows on it because it's just no. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I've worked with Linux, Red Hat, uh, obviously Mac, Windows. 
I've worked with lots of different over the years with with the job that I've done in the past and stuff. I've worked a lot with different um, operating software, sure. and Windows is the hardest I've ever dealt with. I cannot. Hmm, yeah. That's interesting. I, yeah. I have not dealt with anything, but well, I dealt with the Mac for a little bit. I I was I had a couple of apples, which I liked. I mean, I liked. But uh, so I've I've always dealt with Windows, and I guess you know hasn't it doesn't seem too bad to me. But I don't have anything else to really compare. I might be like oh, I've been missing out on this all in life <laughs> if I uh, if I had something else to try. So let's put it this way: um, um, without sharing, I don't know if I can share too much information. But most of the UK infrastructure, when it comes to power stations, the operating software we use is not Windows because it is unstable. So <laughs> oh, that's interesting. That's really yeah. wow. That's massively, telling. massive, massively unstable. So. <laughs> I mean, when you run a power station and you get a blue screen of death, that's a little bit more serious than... <laughs> oh, and I've had that. As an operator, I have been sat there and it's like um, the last power station I worked at when I was an operator, we had, um, we had a soft desk and a hard desk. We were like one of the last power stations in the world to ever like try and transition to a complete soft desk. And it, it kind of got halfway and that was it. It kind of got that far. We ran, ran out of money and we knew the power station wasn't going to last forever. So and like you can be sat there and you're using the soft desk really nicely and it's all everything's running on auto because like the auto sequencing was all done via the soft desk that was taken away from the hard desk and suddenly all the screens just turn off everything not like <laughs> just blue screen but like everything kind of oh goes gray and then it goes yellow and then all everything just turned off and it was like hmm <laughs> <laughs> so you then you're then scanning over all the gauges of the back panel and you're kind of like well we're, we're still generating electricity it's still that's good Time for me to stand up and sweat because <laughs> I am now going to panic. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Can. And that that was running on Red Hat, so oh, yeah, okay. that which, which is a stripped back version of Linux, and Linux is a very basic version of Windows. So, hmm. yeah. See, I I, do, I know nothing about that kind of stuff. Um, but if they could get me a Steam Deck that just played Game Pass games, I'd certainly be be interested. A lot. See that, that that could even be an option for them. They could pre-sell it with the basically the the Microsoft the Xbox dashboard pre-installed. So there you go. Yeah. They just press on press on the Xbox logo and sign in, and away you go. Yeah. If they did that, <laughs> I'd be I would be super interested for sure. Um. But so yeah. Uh, anything else in top stories before we move on, Sean? No, I mean you did well. There were some good good points and points to make. Yeah, yeah. I, I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> Tea for falling out. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I like it. Um, hey, Tim says. Uh, oh, we'll get there, Tim. He's talking about my uh, my new controller, which I absolutely love. Um, but uh, we'll get there for sure. Uh, it won't take long because Sean Sean has a quick list of things that he's been playing. Take it away, Sean. What have you been playing this week? Uh, uh, Zelda. <laughs> the same thing you've been playing the last two or three weeks. Uh, like I said, it's okay. I, and I haven't yet. It's good. I haven't yet played Zelda on the screen. I haven't played it docked. <laughs> so that that, that, that says a lot. It's kind of like, um, how, how was I playing it earlier? Um, Lindsay went for a bath. The kids were playing downstairs while watching something on the TV. The eldest was in her bedroom playing Red Dead. She's got right into Red Dead this week for some nice. reason. Um, so I kind of just I picked up the switch, picked it up out of the dock, went upstairs, went and sat on the bathroom floor, and kind of like half talked to Lindsay and kind of half got to the the final boss battle of Zelda. So yeah, that's that's how I play it. It's kind of like I kind of like look around the house and I'm like, well, there's no chores to do. The kids are playing, everybody's happy. I just I, you know I'll play a little bit of Zelda do- undocked. <laughs> that's I- that's it. I really feel my claim to fame in that game is going to be that I booted it up for 15 minutes, went into an in-game bathroom, sat on an in-game toilet, shut it off, and went to a real-life bed. Like, like that's... Because that's, that's been my current playthrough of it. I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I want to deal with it. They were talking about I had to go to a festival, and uh, I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I just put it See, up. Yeah. See, with this, with this week's releases, which we'll talk about in a little bit, I, I, I need to step away from the switch, and I need to start demanding a bit more TV time because there are some games, that, you know, Train World, Sim, the second one. 
I can't wait. But anyway, <laughs> um, but no, there is there is some good games. We're going to talk about those in a little bit. But um, there is some stuff that I need to get back into. So I like it. Um, so now that you're done, um, let me talk about. I I've been playing three games, and to be fair, I'm just lucky that the one game I'm addicted to is now is is on the Xbox. Because to be fair, I would. I mean, I'm in the same boat, really. Um, I played Dodgeball Academia, and uh, it's a it's a fun game. It's like a golf story game is what it really is. It's, it's golf story. I mean, it's, it's, uh, except it's with dodgeball and you're, you're in this world. And I think actually, maybe I talked about this last week. I was thinking I didn't, but maybe I did now that I'm sitting here chatting about it. I'm like, I, I cause I think I, I said it was like bully. Um, yes. Yeah. I did talk about this. Yeah. So it's like a version of bully slash golf story and it's dodgeball. So we'll move on now that I realized <laughs> I was talking about, that. <laughs> I talked about that. Um, I have played copious amounts of Grounded. I'm sorry, I know nobody wants to hear me talk about this, but you're stuck. Um, see, if they could see, if they could see, I mean, I hope you tweeted on the Game Pass News I have Twitter not. feed no, I haven't. about, but you need to show pictures of that castle because that is amazing. I mean, you, <laughs> when when we were deep into Animal Crossing and we were doing the like the people coming over and seeing everything that we built, you you always had to like your stadium that you built and things like that you always had a really good eye for building stuff if you guys could see how this castle looked (laughs) you'd be amazed it is amazing (laughs) yeah so i finished although here's the thing though just like with animal crossing i finished the castle and i unlocked zip lines like that so i can build my own now around the world which is great and so two quick stories and grounded one i built this one zip line from my castle to the oak tree and that's a pretty long way and I knew because of the length, because of how far it was, it didn't have a great descent. But I thought, well, you know, game probably didn't take that into accommodation. Oh, they did, Sean. <laughs> so <laughs> I hit the button for the zip line, and I'm like, wee! He always makes this wee sound every time he goes under a zip line. He's like, wee! And then there I am. I could, I could have literally walked, not ran. <laughs> I could have walked faster than i was zip lining on the zip line. and there's no way i was trying to find a button to like make my character swing to try to give me some momentum there was nothing so i had to blow that away um and try again can you not can you not build it did you build a tower do you have to like build a tower off the side oh, of the I castle did. i was already two <laughs> scaffolds high so i had to build it again and i built it four scaffolds high and i built it two scaffolds down on the other side so it so then it ended up having a pretty good like descent enough to where it was faster than even running but not by much. It's just such a long distance. But I really didn't like that I had scaffolds on my castle because it just looks dumb. Um so now I am building uh I don't know what you would call them like spiral turrets on the corners yes. of of the castles so that turrets. those are going to Yeah, okay. I didn't know if they were called turrets or not. Um this does two things one it lets me use the spiral staircase in a real way which i've wanted to do and two i'm going to be able to make a cool looking uh, instead of using scaffolding i'm going to build these turrets gigantically tall and uh and zipline around them that's my plan so as as i thought i was almost done sean (laughs) so with the ziplining does that allow you that obviously that allows you to get to different because if you're going to build four turrets you're going to obviously want to then build four landing zones yeah uh and the oak tree is always a good center point to go to Mm-hmm. I'm assuming the lantern in the lake is probably going to be another one that you're going to want to go for. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm trying to think now. Um, you've obviously found the Spirograph robot, so that'll be another yeah. point because that's a oh, good. Oh, I don't distance, know if I can right? make it all the way to the Spirograph. Oh, that's pretty far away. Um. But uh, if I can try to get to the bird bath, that would be good over by where yeah. that one closed door was. Yes. Um. So yeah, if I can make it over to the bird bath, that would be good. Because but... I'm assuming once you once you're ziplining, you you out of ham's reach basically yeah there's, there's not many yeah. things that fly other than the mosquitoes mm-hmm. and bees and i've never really encountered much to do with the bees so yeah bees don't hurt you unless you hurt them so yeah yeah like in real life I like yeah. it yeah that's pretty that's pretty true i use the top of my castle as like as like a bee arena when i need when i need some bee fuzz i go up there and i wait for one to pass my castle and i shoot it with my crossbow and then it comes to me and we have it we have it out on the top of the castle. It's kind of fun. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, that's grounded. Um, more importantly, new news. Uh, new game out on game. Not for everybody, but for Game Pass. Um, Hades came out last week. Um, 
I so I played Hades three different ways. I played Hades using touch controls. I played Hades on the Xbox, and I played Hades with my new Backbone controller, which is what Tim is talking about, and I absolutely love that thing. I have played. I have been using that Backbone controller a lot, and um, I like Hades. I'm probably going to be, I, I am the opposite opinion. And it's not because the game's not good. It's just, I'm not a roguelike fan. I don't want to throw myself into the same dungeon over and over and over again. So this isn't anything against Hades. Out of out of the roguelikes, I probably like Hades the most, which is pretty much what you hear from everybody. So I'm not, I'm not bagging on Hades. Don't, don't come at me. Um, it's just, that's not my genre. So I'm not surprised. I'm not a big fan of it. I will say touch controls for Hades are poor. Uh, that's the best way I can say it. Playable, but poor. Uh, you won't make it near as far. I was telling Sean, played with touch controls first. I made it like, I don't know, maybe four or five rooms in. And then I played I played on the actual Xbox. And I made it much, much further. Much, much further. So uh, it's much easier to play without those touch controls. They, they're a real hindrance. And then I played with the Backbone, which was just as good. And I love that thing. It's just, uh, the Backbone is, by the way, is a, is a controller that you can put your um your iphone in it kind of spreads out put your iphone in there and it clamps down and it has um it has a little uh lightning lightning port that connects to your iphone when you clamp it back in and your the controller automatically recognizes the iphone it's got a port so you can pass through electric uh pass through power to your phone if you need to do that it also has a port for headphones uh if you if you need to do that and so uh, it also so it solves also the problem of like if you want to play on your phone, but you you need to have the lightning controller for headphones and stuff like that. This splits those two out, which is really amazing. And I am a big big fan of it. Um, so if you're looking for something to play on your phone with iCloud, and it works with other games too. I've just only played iCloud games. Um, uh, this could be your solution. So that's what I've I'm, been playing. I'm I'm trying to find it for the UK now, but I don't think it's actually released in the UK at the moment. <gasps> really? That's horrible. I had no idea. Sorry, UK. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, it so... was on. It's, so if you can't find it on Microsoft's website, it's probably not because I that's that's where I well, well I don't, I got it for a, I got it for a birthday present. So I don't yeah, I'm gonna say playbackbone.com is. Um, yeah, it's not available in the UK, which is hmm. not good. That stinks. Yep. Wonder what's up with that. Well, for all the rest of you, <laughs> we'll have to reach out to him and see what's going on. Um, maybe I'll email him. Surprisingly, how many people email us back? I don't know. It just I'll email him like, "Hey, I have a question," thinking that this is company's never getting back with me. They do. So, um, I'll email them and see what they say. So, uh, on to breaking news. Games out just this week. Uh, we had quite a few and some actual surprises. Some we knew were coming. Uh, 12 minutes just dropped. Literally 12. No, not literally 12 minutes. Uh, it dropped about an hour <laughs> or two ago. Um, I don't know a lot about this game, except John thinks it's the game of the year. It's his game of the year at the moment. See, 12 minutes, 12 minutes is that one where it repeats the same things over and you've kind of got to make decisions based on what happened last time, isn't it? That's that one that we were waiting for. No idea. You're in a room. All I know. Yeah, is yeah. It... It's you, 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 your pregnant wife. It was in. It was on. Uh, it was at the E3 event that we. Yeah, it was. Watched. I didn't. I didn't remember that part about making decisions on what happened previously. But sure. I mean, I'll go with you. Yeah. Um. That's one of the games, and I can understand why he's excited about it. It's one of the games that's going to bring me back to playing the Xbox. Not next week because I'm on holiday, but the week after because the kids are away. They are back at school. Good so. for you. Um, I'm glad for that. You people <clears throat> blow my mind. I have no. I I have not that I don't have any interest in playing it. I certainly have an interest in playing it, but I don't have near this like initial excitement for it. Like, but you guys aren't the only ones. I'm I'm the odd duck out here. I just don't like. I I remember seeing it in the thing. I was like, I have no idea what the hell it's about. And everyone was like, you don't need to. It looks great. It's amazing. And I'm like, um, yeah. sure, that's cool. I mean, I'm glad for you guys. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I just don't I don't have it. But I'll, you know, it's all good. I'll, I'll give it a shot for sure. Um, 
recompile. You play as a as a as a software guy trying to get somewhere in a 3D platforming world. Um, sure, I want to give that one a shot. Train Sim World Two. I'm really trying to get John to play this, but he just won't do it. Um, he's no fun. He wants well, to play this horrible 12 minutes instead of this really cool train game. I don't know. Whatever. Well, I, I, they made like Train Simulator World One was so amazing that they thought they had to go back and make a second <laughs> right. one because everybody loved it so much. Uh, apparently. I wonder how much the wonder how much the original one actually sold. <laughs> um, probably. Pr- actually, I will say this. I hashtag Train Sim World Two in a thing, and I made a joke about I'm the only person that's ever done this. And then after I sent the tweet, I clicked on it just to see if that was true. It's definitely not. This has a following for sure. I mean, there's a bunch of people that were like, look at this awesome train. And they were talking about trains going through real real world areas and their train only went this fast. And yeah, so it's got a serious following. I'll give it that. Um, Hades, which we've already talked about. Uh, Art of Rally is all, was also out last week. Uh, this should be a game. Are you excited for this? Because this is, seems to be... Art of Rally, the, that is another one that uh, I am looking at trying to, to go at because I like the polygon shell shaded style um, art form with it. And it's a racing game, which, you know, yeah, <laughs> I absolutely love racing games. Listen, out of all the racing games that have been released in the last two weeks, this is the one that I would try. Um, yeah. Out of all of the the grids and the dirts and the F1s, this would be the one that I'd be the most interested in with all of them. So I'll give you that. Uh, Boyfriend Dungeon, which I really thought about playing this. I really, or streaming this, not playing it. But I really thought about streaming it um, like for an hour or two. But then I started to watch some playthroughs of it. And I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I'm not going to lie. So you find boyfriends or cats. Tim is really interested in the cat. I don't know if you know that. I hope I hope Tim has befriended his cat. But um, uh, I have you. So you find these boyfriends or cats. You, I don't know, you get into a relationship with them and then they become your weapons, which is just like real life. <laughs> um, I I'm get I... in trouble. I'm going to get in trouble. I'm love... going to leave some games I'd love to get inside the mind of the like the developer and the artist behind it because sometimes I look at games and I'm playing and I'm thinking, what what did you what what ever made you you there must have been a point in their life that made them want to make a game like that so. yeah probably pro- probably yeah it'd be a good conversation maybe we should see if they'll come on and talk about it especially after I just bagged on it I'm sure they would want to uh, um. <laughs> Library of Ruina actually looks like a fun card game. Also might be another one Tim might be interested in. Because he doesn't have enough games to play. Um, uh, it looks like a decently fun card game. You're in a library. You have people come and challenge you. You need to have the biggest, coolest library in the world. Looks decently fun. Um, so, yeah. That is all the new games for this week. Uh, let's move on to some party chat. And Sean, I've been talking too much, so take it away. <laughs> yeah, well, while you've been talking, I'm kind of like I'm half Googling stuff, trying to look at if I can buy a backbone because, you know, <laughs> I'd love to, it. It almost makes it the X Game Pass on a Switch because it's in your hand. The screen's somewhat yeah, the same great. size. So if we get, but you know, we can't get hold of one in the UK. Not even on Amazon. Amazon says it's just currently unavailable. So whether that's or not, crazy. I did not realize yeah. that, but that's good news to know. Um, uh, listen, man, if I could send you one, I would. Probably cost as much as the uh, controller itself. <laughs> I'm gonna it say, yeah, so. it's too, yeah. <laughs> no. um, you wouldn't get it until the moment you got it, it would get, become available. That's what would happen. Okay, you, you could guarantee it. <laughs> yeah. So I've got it on my wish list on Amazon. So as soon as it becomes available on Amazon and I've signed up to the website. So as soon as it's available from because playbackbone.com or .co.uk, the UK guys, um, you can kind of sign up to the newsletter. So hopefully then I can be told. Cool. So, um, but yeah, for the party chat, we have a lot. We had a lot. Tim drops tons of questions for us in the Discord. Um, I've kind of fished through some because there's a couple that not next week because I'm not here, but the week after we're going to kind of talk about the business side of Game Pass. We're going to try and do a deep dive and kind of figure out what Xbox and, and are telling us about 
the subscription service and kind of like what money it makes, what revenue they make from it, if they make any revenue from it at all. So there's a couple of questions in there that we might want to touch on. And yeah, so, but the first question I picked out of the six that he asked for is, is uh, do you still wish or hope for Game Pass Cloud to come to Switch regardless of the business side, how the business side will work? We kind of covered that earlier on. Uh, I didn't realize we were going to go into the how deep we were going to go into the Phil Spencer article. But I didn't either. I'm sorry. I rabbited us. Please forgive me. <laughs> sorry. But yes, I'd still like it to come to the Switch because I would like to be able to play a Game Pass games on the move when I don't have time. Because we only have one. I don't... I, well, it's the UK. We, there's not many houses in the UK that have a basement. I don't have enough rooms in the house to have a cave of which I can be a man. Um, so <laughs> like a, that's like a Yoda statement, a cave of which I am a man. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, my my the time I only get to game is when everybody's gone to bed, and nine times out of ten, by the time everybody's going to bed, I'm that tired. I want to go to bed too. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. I'm there. Probably not nine times out of ten, but probably at least eight, six or eight, somewhere in there. I don't know. So I, I get that. So um. The other question, and this is a good one because I have had both of the consoles for this, but why did you choose Xbox over PlayStation? Are so, you asking, you're asking me? I'll ask you because I've had both, sure. and I know why I've continued with the Xbox. So this was this was so I'll just give my history real quick. I'm I'm an Xbox guy, and then I left. I didn't leave Xbox. I just didn't have time for both so i just chose nintendo and i got the wii u and then i got the switch and then i got some more time and i was like i'll go back into another system and then i did have a moment of like where am i gonna go and this was during this was like right when uh ps5 and xbox s and x were coming out and i was like so where am i gonna go back or am i gonna go to the playstation because i I will lie i mean the horizon zero dawn god of war spider-man i mean i'm not a big marvel guy but I, I remember in some game, one of the Spider-Mans, I flipped around New York, and I absolutely loved it. It wasn't one of the yes. recent ones. Spider-Man um, 3 for the PlayStation 2. Did that come out on Xbox or yeah. on or on uh, a Nintendo system? Uh, I, I never had a PlayStation, so it came out on one of those two systems. Or one of those two yeah. platforms. I'm not certain which. But I, I loved it. I had a lot of fun zipping around. And so, man, it was like, what do I do? For me, it was two things. One, it was a little nostalgia. Won't lie, I started off with the OG. I got the 360. I had so many good memories of Halo. Fable was my first big story game where I could be whatever I wanted and do and play how I wished, good, bad, be a jerk. Um, and so I had a lot of nostalgia for that, and that certainly played a role. And the second, and the reason we're here, was um, Game Pass. I mean, it was just like, what do you... Do I want do I want to buy all these games on PlayStation? Now, it came to turn out that the older games, a lot of those I probably wouldn't have had to buy, um, or at least I could have bought them at a real discount on PlayStation. But at the time, I was like, you know what? I just want to be able to play a bunch of games and just bu- get, buy me a system and play a bunch of games and not worry about, you know, okay, because I got two, I got two consoles, right? And there ain't no Game Pass on Nintendo. Um, so I now have to, what, I'm going to buy the cool Nintendo games coming out and then I'm going to try to find money to also buy games for this new system? Ain't going to happen. I'm not going to have that kind of cash. Like that could be, that could be $200 some months if it's like, well, two games for Nintendo and one games for Xbox. Not going to happen. And I'm probably not going to have the time to play them all. So it's like Xbox, because that way I can just play Game Pass games when I want to, how I want to, and I don't have to feel like, well, you know, I've paid, I've paid the seventy dollars, and now I have to play this game because I don't want to look like I wasted this cash, like I did with Skyward Sword that I haven't played yet. But that's okay. I'm gonna get to it. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get to it. It's gonna happen. It's gonna. <laughs> um. So, so yeah, that's why I chose Xbox. Cool. For me, I I've always had the Xbox, but I've also had a PlayStation. I, I the first, the first one. 28-bit console I ever got was a PlayStation. Uh, I played Super Jack Rabbit. I played Crash Bandicoot. played Gran Turismo. Um, we then got the PlayStation 2, to which then like Metal Gear, the likes of Metal Gear Solid. 
<laughs> Welcome to. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> I love it when they use it because they like that to announce stuff. Um, so then, like, obviously, the PlayStation Two continued with the adventures of playing Gran Turismo, um, things like that. I then stopped with PlayStation and moved to Xbox. I because I had the OG like you, I had the OG Xbox. Really in love with Halo, Fable, things like that. And then the 360 was released, and then Call of Duty kind of like online became like my game in life. That was it. That's all I played. I played it with my dad and my brother. We all had the same console. We're all in the same house. We all played online together as a team. Um, it wasn't until, trying to think now, uh, 2008. I think I went back to PlayStation. Uh, I had my first knee operation and there wasn't a game that I wanted to play on the Xbox that I thought would be of any great interest. So I bought myself a PlayStation 3 because I wanted to play a little big planet. Um, absolutely fell in love with that. Um, I played it loads, even made loads of levels and stuff like that. But just kind of like, because I couldn't get up and walk, I kind of had to, on a morning, I used to hobble down the stairs, hobble to the sofa, sit myself on the floor. And then like eight hours later, get off the floor because I used to do my exercises while I was sat on the floor and stuff because try and like re you know, rehabilitate my knee and things like that so it's kind of like it became the place that I stayed um so I played a lot of that then uh I then sold my PlayStation 3 got into the Xbox One kind of stuff and then and then Spider-Man came out and and I was like oh, wow I was really into that really wanted to play that so i got the playstation 4 got back into spider got really i played the hell out of spider-man got all the dlc played it to death um kind of went back and played a couple of games like crash bandicoot crash team racing um because you could buy them the old versions of those off, off the ps store and things like that but there was always just that there's, there's always that niggle with the playstation that the the, the playstation network if you wanted it to be a decent thing you you had for me it felt like you had to pay the extra bit to have the stability and stuff which xbox just seemed to it was like if you always play online you have to just just pay the subscription monthly or yearly to get xbox gold and their online was so much better the servers seemed to be so much stronger you, there was never this issue of lagging in and out of games all the time and connection failures and then like the, there was a whole debacle that the PlayStation Network like absolutely collapsed at one point and all hell broke loose. And it's kind of like, there was always just this, PlayStation always, to me, just seemed to have this issue with online gaming where Microsoft and Xbox just did not. They kind of just, it was solid all the time. So I just, I, the, the PlayStation then began to collect dust because I was playing more online stuff with my friends who were also Xbox players. And we didn't have that cross-platform ability at that point. So... PlayStation just sat there and collected dust and I sold it and made some good money. I think I sold it for 400, which was quite nice. Um, and yeah, that was it. I just, I'd, I'd always, circ always circulate way, my way back to Xbox for whatever reason. And yeah, that was it. I've, I've tried to branch off and I've tried to, but they just, it always, I always end up coming back because it always seems more solid. It's a, a better service. Um, their exclusives are always the ones that I want to play most. Yeah. Or I can justify paying most because if I want to play them on the PlayStation, I've either got to borrow somebody's console or pay for a whole new console. And it's kind of like, I don't want to play it that much. Yeah. So. Yeah, that answers that question anyway. <laughs> um. um I'll, I'll go to Bruce's question next okay. because it was quite good with what you were saying about game pass games and not wanting to or not having to worry about finishing them his question is with game pass is do you find it harder to finish games um that's tough uh initially i say no no i don't i i'm really going back and forth on this one 
there's a there's there's two answers to this <laughs> there's two answers to this question and there's a yes and a no answer it's it is more difficult but only in the sense that because i'm not spending money on that game i don't feel like i have to finish it yeah you know like if i want to bounce off of it maybe i spent 60 dollars on on a game and i've played it for you know i've played it 10 percent through or whatever and i'm like you know what this game i was enjoying it now i'm really just like done with it i don't want to play it anymore but inside of me there's this thing like you spent 60 bucks on the game so play it and so i don't have that anymore which i'm happy to be rid of that so it's like yeah sure i got 10 hours into this game i got what i wanted out of it maybe i didn't barely make it anything but i'm like well there's a i'm better i'm good i'm done i don't want to play it anymore and now i can go play something else so for that it's made it more difficult to play a game if a game holds my interest I need to find out how I can get hours, how I can find out how many hours I've played a game in Xbox. I don't really know. But if a game holds my interest, if it's up my alley, like uh, like Grounded, um, well, I'll continue to play it for many, many hours because I have played Grounded for a crap ton of hours. Yeah, and that's that's the same with me. And it's like I said in the in the episode when you were on vacation, I now see xbox game pass as because we don't have video rental stores over here anymore we just don't have them and like as a kid it used to be like every week i'd go to the video store with my dad as he got like a film for him and my mum to watch then i was allowed to ha- to hire a game that i could sit and play in my room so i was like i was trying loads of different games and i was like i like there might be a game that i played i went back to a lot because you know i'd hired it for a week and I wanted to keep the same game. So we just used to go in, we used to talk to the guy behind the counter and be like, can you just, uh, can I have this game again for a week? You, you know, is there anybody that's kind of wanting it and putting it on hold? And I could have it again for the rest of the week. And that's kind of like the way I, I treat Game Pass. It's, I'll try loads of different games, like um, Lonely Mountains, that game, it, I keep going back to it. And I keep playing it. I keep getting, unlocking more levels or different versions of the levels and stuff like that. So I keep going back to it. There is games on there that I've tried and I've kind of like I've done the stream for because I thought, oh, the interesting game to stream, played it, enjoyed what I played, but now I won't go back to it because it's kind of like I enjoyed the bit that I played and it is a good game, but I don't think I'll go back to it. When then there is other games that like I'm excited to get hold of and play and, and have a go at, and that's things like. Uh, the 12 minutes. Uh, <laughs> so like 12 minutes, I will, I want to play. So I'll play it. And if I do enjoy it, I'll continue it. And I will, you know, I'll, I'll try and figure out if there's a way of beating that. If it's one of those games that can be beaten, or if it's just one of those games that keeps going again and going and going. A bit like Grounded. I think Grounded is one of those games where you, you kind of set yourself personal tasks rather than there being constantly objectives to, to achieve. It's like, like most people are fine when Skate Free comes out on game pass is there there's just tons of objectives to complete but at the same time you can pick a line on the skateboard and go and you kind of listen to your own music or listen to the music that's in the game and it's, it's a game where you can just kind of switch off and play and think about and like pass two or three hours so mm-hmm. i don't so yeah i don't find it harder to finish games i just like i'm a bit like you you've you've not got that investment like skyward sword i i spent actual money on it it's a zelda game and i've won it's kind of like my personal achievement is to have played and completed every zelda game that there is and i'm slowly getting there and it's kind of like so i i've paid the money for it i want to complete it because you know i want to finish it and i've got the majority of the items in the game before metroid comes out because then i know for a fact that when i buy metroid i'm going to be a wall again from the xbox but i'm I'm gonna focus on that game because i've paid money for it and mm-hmm. it's kind of yeah yeah no i i totally agree with it and i'm i'm glad to be read of that i mean i'm glad to be read of the thing of like well i bought it i should do it i have to do it and it's the right thing to do let me just play what i want to play i'll try a million games and and i know game sampler is the big thing justin justin coined it a while ago i mean tim has said it twice in our discord <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. Am I a game sampler? Well, maybe. Um, I'm, I sample games until I find one that tastes really, really good, and then I just, you know, I gorge on it. So there you go. Yep. 
That's it. The game Pass is the all-you-can-eat buffet of the gaming world. And yeah. yep. Yeah, that's it. That's totally it. You know, you go to a restaurant, you buy like a, a a shitty meal, or you order a shitty meal, and you're like, well, I've ordered this shitty meal, and now I must eat it. Nope. You're <laughs> at the Game Pass buffet. You don't like it? You're like, here, have that plate. I'm going yeah. back up for something that actually tastes good. You know? Yep. There you go. That's Fill what they the should have called it, the Game Pass Buffet. <laughs> There's the title for this week's episode. <laughs> That's it. I like it. That's, so, we, we figured it out. Yep. Uh, the last question that I'm going to pull out of everything is from Hamburg and Johnny. And have you played Hades yet? And if not, what are you waiting for? Yeah, Sean, what are you waiting for? <laughs> um, TV time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for my kids to give me some time on the TV. Yeah. But no, I am... Um, I didn't want to play this on the Switch. I, I kind of, when everybody was talking about it and it got its own sub on Discord, I was I kind of like skipped through it and read and I was like, eh, I'm not sure. But then I'd, I'd say that about quite a lot of few games on Game Pass and I wouldn't ever play them. So maybe now because I don't have to spend money for it and I can sample it from the Game Pass buffet, I'll probably give it a go. <laughs> I did. And it's good. It's a roguelike. And if you like roguelikes, you'll love it. And if you don't like roguelikes, you'll still like it, but you probably still won't love it. That's my, <laughs> that's what I would say about it. Um, you know, uh, it's the best roguelike I've ever played. That's, what, that's, that's all I can say about it. Um, so, yeah. Cool. So, yeah, that's, that's I mean, because I know we like to try and keep this in under an hour, and there's a still loads of questions so we will save them for another time yeah we'll hit it we'll, we'll get to them all just not this week yeah so if we want to move on to the golden ticket um there's one on there that i'm extremely excited about and everybody should go and get because the fact that that game is now free is amazing wait 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 wait, um, wait hold on hold on it's got to be a new it's it's a new one coming up is that right it uh, is a new okay. one coming up right. yes i'm gonna i don't really i mean I'm assuming it's not that Watch it be that one, but I'm gonna say it's Tom Clancy's The Division. Yes. Okay. Ah. Uh, a little nervous. I was wrong. No, the game is it, honestly. If you have an Xbox and you want somebody to play that game with online, let me know and I will play it with you because I absolutely loved it. It's... You will kick a kid off a TV just to play that with you. <laughs> Throw a kid out the window for it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no. So Yukla and the Laylee, which is not the most recent version. Yeah. Um, that's still there and that's available till the 31st of August. Darksiders 3 is still available and still available till the 31st of August. Blob 2 is coming to Games of Gold uh, the 1st of September till the 15th of September. And Undangerous, which I haven't a clue what that is. Mm -hmm. um, but that's. Sorry, normally 16th. I put synopsis of these and I totally didn't. My bad. Yeah. So that's the 16th of September till the 30th of September, an unwritten tale, which sounds very RPG to me, but could yeah, maybe not I be. It, I don't know. I, I Again, I haven't launched the Xbox since the, I tried to stream in Rays of Light. So I, I, um, I will, I will, I will mention this. Is, is this one of the, well, how often, let me ask that question. Cause I don't think I have seen it since I've been on, on the Xbox with this, with with my series s um how often do they do three games of gold at the same time um every time i thought it was only two no you always get free, an option of a, a choice of three games most times oh well don't hold on i'm trying okay we're good. um sorry oh i guess i was just confused okay so then the crazy thing is that there's only going to be two for a period of time yes okay that's true uh yeah yeah i was i was crazy on the wrong side unless they they're just hiding what that third one's gonna be they don't want you to know Maybe. that might not have been dropped yet yeah so. um the the one that i'm really excited about so tom clancy's the division um from the 1st of september to the 30th of september it is available to claim and download i would claim it it's it was i mean it's amazing it's a post-apocalyptic version of new york city and it is like map map accurate of the city hmm. um and it's there's been a massive flu outbreak so it's very relevant to the well current grand. okay yeah um 
and there's been riots and there's like it's now the whole city's kind of sectioned into like rikers like the the prison has been like overrun and like the prisons have got out and there's been loot in and it, they've kind of like the boroughs the free boroughs of new york have kind of like now become different separate areas and stuff like that and then you've got in the center of new york you've got the like the dark zone which is where it's like the the most the the virus is most contagious and you've got to get a certain mask to, like you've got to unlock certain mask to get in there so you can breathe for for a certain time and that's kind of the multiplayer section of the map but yeah it, it's fantastic it was the first game that ran with a snow your new snowflake engine so like hmm. the, as the times of day change it's just it's a beautiful game it's really well done it's a third person over the shoulders style shoot 'em up a bit like gears of war with some really cool tech advantages so you get little turrets you get little like grenade balls that kind of like a remote controlled and roll to the target and explode and stuff like that. Really technical, really tactical style game, which is what Tom Clancy does. He was the the original SAS style gameplay. Sure, yeah. But it is such a good game to play. And like the the second one when that came out was okay. I didn't play it as much as I played the first one, but the first one was just fantastic. Lots very difficult game in places. If you want to try and rush through this game, you cannot do that. You've got to take your time and do the missions in a certain order so i don't know what's going on upstairs but it can't be good right now um so are you are you fighting flu are you fighting flu zombies no you're just you're fighting other people just rioters okay. um you you kind of you've you make up the J, jtf which is the joint task force sure. and you operate out of i think it's the museum in the middle of New York, you're kind of operating out of there. Oh no, it's the library, sorry. And you're operating out of there and that's become like the base for people to get to for supplies and stuff. And your job basically is you play an agent with other agents because um, you can play it all cooperatively and stuff like that online or you can do it yourself. And you've got to go in and you, you're taking back supplies from, from rioters and stuff like that. And basically, you just you kind of policing the state, and it is it's fantastic. There's no vehicles, so you like everything's on foot. You've got to walk everywhere, and it's a good. It's it's great, and the fact that it was map accurate, map accurate for New York was really good to me as well. Because I'm I'm a big fan of the city. I've never been. I've always liked to go, but the ability to walk around it. It's all based in winter as well. So, and you've got to dress appropriately. You've got to obviously keep warm. Oh, change your attire, your loadouts according to what you're doing, and your tactical gear is all going to be changed according to you know, the battles that you're going into. So it is, it's very, it's a good game. What's to think about? Nice. Um. All right. Well, I will actually, I will claim it. I probably would have never claimed it, but I will now. Um. And I also want to see what this Armed and Dangerous and Unwritten Tales all about. Um. So I don't have to look into that. But, uh, what is on the horizon? Um, only one new game on the horizon just dropped this last not dropped, but uh, we got word that it was coming uh, Mist, which I'm actually somewhat excited for uh, I was a big Mist fan. I played it with my mom um, back in high school uh, pretty sure uh, um, and so uh, They're doing some They're They're making it look a little bit nicer and so I'll be interested to see what what they do to it and uh, that should be coming out on August 26th uh, the only other game right now to be really know, or that's coming out, well, I'll probably podcast before this, maybe, um, is Psychonauts 2, coming out yep. on Thanks. August 25th. Very interested to, uh, get a playthrough, or to start playing through that. And that might be the game that takes me away from Grounded. Uh, it really might be. Uh, Psychonauts was a, I played a couple hours of that, I really did like it, but, uh, it showed its, it showed its, uh, time. So I was, I was ready to be, I, I didn't really want to, it showed its age is what I'm trying to say. So I was ready for, yeah. to wait for the new one, which, I mean, that's fair. It's like, it was an older game, but still. Uh, games that are going bye-bye, uh, Blair Witch, Double Kick Her Heroes, Stranger Things 3, and NBA 2K21. So, goodbye. Also Madden 19, which is still available, yeah. but we knew it was going to be bye-bye as of last week. It's a shame that the Stranger Things free game's going away because that's if you like eight bit top down like style gameplay, that's actually quite a good game to get hold of. I played that 
and it's very um i can't think of the word now that, yeah, yeah, that was a good game to play so. it, yeah it was i mean if you're a big fan of the series it, it kind of followed the, the third season of the series um uh, each different character you played had different abilities that you had to kind of use you, you created a party and you kind of done did other things but it was a good game to play so it's sad to see that leave um if you get a chance to play it before it leaves so because i'm assuming won't. but i would i wouldn't the, mind i actually do watch stranger things so I season can't. four august 21st i know yeah do you think now see i'm gonna become a conspiracy theorist because there have been more than there's been more than a handful of times where this has been the case do you think maybe there's a stranger things four in the works i mean video game definitely yeah i think you're right i mean look at like you know it's like you know train sim world and who cares about train sim well there is a, there's a good pe bit of people as i said that do train sim world one leaves and then all of a sudden it's like hey train sim world two coming to you from it's you know day one game pass and it's like oh okay so yeah now i start to watch these these what's leaving on game pass with with like a different eye of just like oh okay it's leaving but like well, is there a reason it's leaving? You know, like, yep. why is it leaving? So, no, I definitely think that they'll, um, because they made, they, they did one for season one, they did one for season two, they, like, but they were only mobile games. Season three, Strange Things 3 is the only one I think that has actually made its way to a console. Oh. So, in fact, I'm sure probably... it is because I did not realize there was a one and two. I yeah. thought three was the first video game they'd ever done. Oh, okay. That's interesting. I only know that because I play them all. <laughs> nice. That's cool. I, yeah, I really didn't know about the first two. Uh, three came out. Three came out on the Switch too, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I remember seeing it in a you know indie world. Um. All right. So dashboard confessionals. Um. I am gonna be. I re I will get to recompile and train sim world two because John won't do it. John won't play train sim world two. And now when John says the game is horrible, now granted he was talking about train sim world when he said that. So to be fair. Um. It went away, and he was like, you should play this. And I was like, no, nah, I don't have time to play that right now. Um, otherwise, I would have. Um, but then Train Sim World 2 popped up, and I was like, fine. I'm doing it. I'm going to play it. We're going to do this thing. We're going to see how horrible this game is. See if 2 is any better. Um, so there you go. And Sean, on the dashboard yep. for you is relaxation on vacation. Make it it is, yes. Good old Scotland, here we come. Um, we're hoping for good weather. If not, there's going to be a lot of trying to come uh, entertain everybody in the, the lodge. <laughs> oh, I'll just go for really long walks and get wet. So, That's you know. right. Yep. What are you going to do? Yeah. So what's coming up for us, pal? We got... Um, so, to, oh, yeah. So I've added a little section here called the information broadcast. So it's kind of like what, what we are going to be getting up to. So tonight, we have a spot with the Nintendo Dads. Um, I don't know what they're thinking, but hey, they invited us on. <laughs> oh, fools. I'm only kidding. Um, but yeah, that's so you'll you get to see me again. I will be blurry eyed because I think I've got to try and get up at half past two in the morning because we've got to be on with them for 3 a.m. for me. Um, it's 11 p.m. for you, isn't it? Uh, so, no, I, I don't. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna, I should look at that. <laughs> yeah, I definitely look into that. <laughs> I'll look into that um yeah so, i think it's 10 um, p.m for me actually oh yeah, yeah it will 10 be. five hours yep. five 10 hours so 10 p.m so yep we'll be on with those guys um that's live on their twitch and youtube um i think we were going to try and look into a way we could maybe host it through hours from theirs but i don't know if we've looked into that in great detail nope i haven't not at all not even a little <laughs> Not gonna lie, <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't even know how you do that. So, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so that'll be fun. Uh, I just realized that it was Chris HL94 that posted the American Girl Collectors thing. In there. I yeah, totally he's missed it. who it was. Um, he posted it in the Discord as well. He did, yeah. Hey, there you go. I mean, that thing's that thing is cool, but you know, just get people making collecting weird stuff like that. But also, it's a little bit creepy. <laughs> I find dolls like that just creepy. Anyway, I've watched too many horror films with like Annabelle and stuff like that. And stuff. Listen, if I could, if the headset was real and I could take it off of the kid's head um, and put it on mine, then I'd be in. But I don't think it is. It'd be a lot more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it probably, it's probably, I don't know. I, who knows? It's probably expensive. Anyways, uh, so what else we got? I'm sorry. Um, so next week, 
you, you'll have probably seen the next tweet on the Twitter page that we've got. Um, is it Gamescom 21? Yeah, that's man. the title that's for it. it. And that's going to, it's like a, is that their version of the indie world that Nintendo have just done? Um, of games that. Well, Gamescom is an event in Germany. Why didn't you just go to Germany? You could have just seen. I mean, you could have mixed the two together. That would have been great. What was going on there? Um, in yeah. Germany, so they're doing a digital event for everybody during that event. Um, so yeah. So yeah, that's it's. I think that it's just more, looks at more stuff that they've got that's coming out soon. Plus, maybe hopefully some more new stuff. That they kind of they've hidden from us all. We might have some news about Fable that could be teased. That would be nice. I'd take anything about Fable. Make it happen. So, um, so that's I can't remember the times exactly. It's one p.m. for the U.S. and six p.m. for the U.K. Mm-hmm. Yep, you're spot. Um, look at that. Thank you can get me for remembering something. Um, so you, I, I think the plan is that you're going to try and do a live stream like we did for E3A. Uh, that is the plan. We'll see. I mean, we'll see. If if you're in, I'm definitely in. If you're not in, then I'll see if I'm in. I'm gonna try. I'm taking. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm taking my AirPods with me. Um, Tuesday is currently looking like it's gonna be the best day weather-wise while we're away. So Tuesday is definitely gonna be the beach day. Um, so we will probably be back. We'll probably be a bit wiped out, maybe a little bit sun-kissed, depending on how warm and sunny it is. So it might be a good time to try and once everybody's kind of chilling out, watching something. Um, I could maybe sneak off if I get a decent enough signal while we're up there and, and hopefully drop in. So that's the plan. Gotcha. So, but yeah, that's it. I mean, that's a that show. Week, that's a show. We've kind of hit quite a lot of, that was a good broadcasting voice. Then. Um, <laughs> we, we covered a lot. We've still got a lot of questions that we didn't answer. So I'm uh, going to archive those. Um, and it could be a bit of, Content for you next week if you if you struggle. Uh, if not, then I will. Oh, I always struggle. It's okay. <laughs> it's always a struggle. I know the tables have turned. It is you. No, I'll just do it alone. Do... I'll struggle alone. <laughs> <laughs> do the half an hour little like broadcast of everything that's going on. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so that's all from us today. Remember, you can follow us on Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter. Just search for Game Pass News, and you'll find us there. We keep talking about Discord. Um, and where people can get hold of us, like Chris has just dropped that in the little bit that so <laughs> I thought that was at my end this time. I saw oh, Lindsay no, walking upstairs cat's... with something. I thought, oh, she brought the cat coming. Let's uh, gotta hey, get her dude. two cents in before we head out. Yeah, um, so yeah, the Nintendo does run a really awesome Discord. Um, and we talk about it quite often, that's where we get most of our questions from. Um, so for a dollar a month, you can hang out with us. You can ask us questions there. You can chat to us about anything Xbox. If you are a big Nintendo fan, it is a great, great, great place to be for anything Nintendo. There's just so many different people playing so many different games. So head over to patreon.com forward slash Nintendo dads and subscribe to get your access. We hope to hear from you guys soon. And until next time, as always, see you later. See you later, guys.